Features of the skull that are kind of unique in Homo erectus, things like the way that the brow ridge is shaped, it's very straight and flat. Um, there are little ridges and crests of bone on the outer surface of the skull, each of which has its own name, that are kind of different and we don't see them, for example, in modern humans. Um, and they seem to be expressed more consistently and perhaps in a more extreme form in some of the Asian uh, fossils. Whereas we might think of the African and even the Georgian fossils as being a little more generalized, so a little bit less extreme. And so it's easier then to imagine those more generalized um, Homo erectus populations evolving into something else. They haven't kind of moved 100% in the direction of Homo erectus, you could say. That said, you mentioned Turconoboy, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about that fossil. Um, I mentioned previously that it is a child. It's not an adult. It's probably eight or nine years of age. What's kind of tricky about it is that um, we intuitively want to think of Homo erectus as being very modern and therefore developing and growing uh, just like a modern human. But there's been increasing evidence that Homo erectus did not develop or grow in the same way that modern humans did. Um, if you look at the uh, proportional brain growth, so how much brain growth has occurred at any given age, if you look at the way that the teeth develop and erupt, if you look at the development of the skeleton, the limb bones, they all seem to be um, perhaps intermediate in between mm -hmm. the, the slower human pattern and the more rapid chimpanzee pattern. And if we kind of put all this together, it turns out that Homo erectus probably would never have been six feet tall, maybe closer to five and a half feet tall as an adult, suggesting that while it may have undergone an adolescent growth spurt like we see in modern humans, it would not have been such a marked growth spurt. Typically, Homo erectus probably wasn't as tall as we initially suspected from the Turconoboy fossils. Um, something else that's worth noting is that the initial reconstruction of the rib cage and the pelvis of the Turconoboy um, indicated that it had a kind of long and narrow body type, like certain groups of modern humans living in sub-Saharan Africa, like the Maasai or the Turkana people. And this kind of led to all sorts of ideas about how their bodies were adapted for the hot, dry climate they lived in. Whereas in, you might contrast that with Neanderthals that are kind of wide and barrel chested and maybe that's more of a cold adapted body type. But since that time, there's been another pelvis recovered and assigned to Homo erectus, not without debate, but that mm -hmm. pelvis is much wider. It has much more flaring um, blades that kind of wrap around the side of the pelvis. And that shape is actually more primitive. And it suggests that perhaps uh, there might have been an error in the reconstruction of the Turconoboy pelvis. And then just, th just uh, last year in 2020, they did a virtual reconstruction of the rib cage, the thoracic cage that surrounds your lungs and your heart. And based on the kind of shape and angulation of the ribs and the vertebra, the backbones behind that, they suggested that, in fact, the uh, rib cage is quite deep from front to back and wider than initially reconstructed. And if you put those two pieces of evidence together, it suggests that while the limb bones seem more modern, the limb proportions, the kind of uh, the core, if you will, of the body was not fully modern in Homo erectus. And that modern human um, rib cage and pelvis appeared later in evolution. So that reminds me of going back to the more primitive hominids like Lucy. They were quite, you know, their rib cages yeah. sort of flared out quite a bit. 
Yeah, well, you. in fact, if you look at the pelvis of even like Neanderthals and some other or some other kind of later homo species, it's not that narrow. So in some ways, Trichonoboy looks like the outlier now that we have more evidence, but that's how science works. We yeah. continually kind of alter our interpretation and we go back and use new technology and more information to kind of modify and alter those conclusions and hopefully improve on them over time. Mm-hmm.